after the Jets' 10-9 loss to the Broncos, Robert Sala, a.k.a. Bambi, had some comments about the Jets' lack of discipline. The Jets had 13 penalties and seven pre-snap penalties in week four. Sala blamed the offense, pushing the pace so much, saying it messed with a lot of the new players. Rodgers took shots at Sala, saying he should be holding the players accountable instead. Damian Wood took shots at Sala, saying, what the hell is going on with this head coach? Boomer Esiason said there is a major issue in the relationship between Aaron Rodgers and Robert Sala. Sala is now 20 and 35 in his head coaching career with a .364 winning percentage. Well, it's nothing to stand by, but I, I, I will stand by everything that I've said over the last couple of weeks about Robert Sala. Robert Sala is a deer in the headlights. This man doesn't know what the hell he's effing doing, okay? And, I, and here's another thing that I, I can't stand. I don't want to hear it was raining. I don't want to hear it. These players are making millions and millions of dollars. I understand it was nasty outside. Bo Nix has the smallest hands I have ever seen. Bo Nix can throw the ball. And, and they're saying that Aaron Rodgers has the biggest hands or one of the biggest hands in the NFL. So there's no excuses on the, the ball twirling and twisting and hitting the ground as much as it did because it was raining. Now, could we at least understand this as a Jet fan? Brees Hall is not the guy. Okay? How many times do I have to say it on this show? Allen has been the better running back. Yesterday, Allen was the better running back. Brees Hall had nine yards. Nine yards the whole game. He had a negative, what was it, a negative two going into the second half of the game. He can't run the ball. He's not consistent. I know everybody and everybody's fantasy team believed that this guy was the number two running back in the league. He's not. He is not the number two running back. He's not even a top 10 running back right now in the league. Allen is a top running back. He is going to be a top running back moving forward. If the Jets gave him more touches, if the Jets gave him 30 touches or 25 touches in a game, this guy's going to get you 100 yards every single game. He runs people down. He bulldozes you. He absolutely dominates the line of scrimmage. How many times, Brees Hall, how many times did we see Brees Hall on the one-yard line in this game? How many times? We saw it three times that they tried to bulldoze Brees Hall to get that touchdown. And all three times, he couldn't get in. If the Jets get that touchdown, the Jets win the game. And you want to know something? What is this play calling? And maybe there's a misconception about what Aaron Rodgers was going into the season. But I'm going to tell you something. Aaron Rodgers, for whatever we have seen so far this season, has no true identity for this team and this and his quarterback play. There is no wide receiver. Garrett Wilson, who was supposed to be so explosive, be one of the best wide receivers in the league, I thought was going to be a top five wide receiver, getting 1,000 yards last year with Zach Wilson as your starting quarterback. How many quarterbacks started? Still had over 1,000 yards. Garrett Wilson, in the first three weeks, he had a touchdown the week before. He has been horrible. Horrible. And I understand... He, Patrick Sertan is fantastic. He's one of the top three corners in the league, and he got paid this offseason, and he well-deserved. Patrick Sertan, to me, is one of the top two corners in the league. You can argue him and Sauce were the two best players uh, in this game and probably the two best, uh, the two best athletes uh, at their position in all of football. But right now, Bambi doesn't know what he's doing. They just they, – they don't know how to run this offense. There is no – there's no consistency. There's nothing. And this defense did play well in the first half. They dominated the first half. And then in the third quarter, when the rain stopped, they let Bo Nix take it all the way down the field and get the ball to Sutton. It was, at one point, third and 11 in the third quarter, which, by the way, they get the touchdown. It was third and 11 on their 40. Yes, the Broncos 40. And Bo Nix needed to complete a pass. He throws a 20-yard pass to Sutton. 20-yard pass. This is supposed to be one of the elite secondaries in all of football. Michael Carter. Sauce Garner. DJ Reed. There's a touchdown, by the way. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. You shut down Bo Nix to how many yards in the first half? What was it, 30-something? It was, it was horrible. Bo Nix looked like, he didn't even look like a quarterback. 
He looked like he should be hanging out on the sidelines, you know, feeding popcorn to the players. I just, it was horrible. He, it would have been better off watching Zach Wilson in that game. That's how bad he was in the first half. And then all of a sudden, the Jets defense, again, didn't show up in the third quarter. They've done this before. Last year, they did it. And the problem with them is they can't stop teams on third downs. It's been a huge, huge problem for this team. And again, Aaron Rodgers, who did look good last week, and I know all the Jet fans were so excited. Oh, this is a great Aaron Rodgers. This, uh, Aaron Rodgers is back. And what did I tell you guys? What did I tell you guys on this show? It's the New England friggin' Patriots. That's who they played last week. That's what everybody was, you know, impressed about. New England. The same New England Patriot team that has Gerard Mayo as their head coach, not Bill Belichick, has Jacoby Brissett as their starting quarterback, not Tom Brady. What was so impressive about the Jets knocking off the New England Patriots on, what was it, Thursday night football? 24-3. to three. There was nothing impressive by that. Nothing. And the Broncos are even worse than New England. And the Broncos are 2-2. Two and two. They have the same record as the New York Jets. And Aaron Rodgers at a press conference, at the press conference, I'm going to say this about you. I, Aaron, I love you. I respect you. I think you're the greatest quarterback I've seen in my lifetime. You're sensational. Stop making excuses. Take responsibility for this team. You didn't make the plays. You didn't. You didn't seal the deal in the fourth quarter, even though, and by the way, you did fumble that ball in the fourth quarter. That was fun. If that, if they could challenge that, they would have lost by more in the game. It would have been worse. They got lucky. The challenges were done. Sean Payne used all his challenges in the game. If he could, if you could go back, if Sean Payne could go back, this game probably would have been worse. They probably win. I'm, I'm just predicting here. 17 to nine. Because if they got that ball on the, what was it, 35-yard line, on the Jets' 35, they score. They score. The game was over. It looked like it was over. And the Jets sure showed up, and then the kicker, Lutz, who I did not believe he was going to miss that, he, he missed it. And I thought, oh, this is the Jets' chance. They take the ball. They're, what was it, first and 10, and they were on, I think, I'm, I'm not, rem I don't, don't remember for sure, they were on the Broncos' 45, first and 10, and they couldn't get they couldn't get to the 35 yard line or they, at, at at any point to get, to keep it between 40 and 45 yards. Instead, you had Greg Belay kick a 50 yard field goal, which he missed earlier in the game. He not a 50 yard, he missed a 45 yard kick. They he you put him in you put him in a position where he's not comfortable in. It's raining, the wind was blowing, and they miss. They didn't deserve to win that game, guys. They didn't deserve to win that game. And if the Jets won that game, I you you know damn well Robert Sala would have went up, went up, would have went up there. Hey, listen, you know, we didn't have the best game, but good teams find a way to win. Bad teams find a way to lose badly. And you know what the Jets are? They're mediocre. They're a mediocre team. Their defense shows up in one half and disappears in the second half. This is the Jets. This has been the Jets for such a long time. And I could sit here and make up many different excuses. 13 penalties? Seven pre-snap penalties? What are you, nuts? You're going you're gonna to win games like that? There were too many penalties in the fourth quarter. Too many. No excuses. And I'm telling you right now, Robert Sala, A.K. Bambi, and Aaron Rodgers are not on the same page. They're not getting along. And I'm going to tell you this right now. They don't get into the playoffs. Bambi's fired. Joe Douglas is fired. And Aaron Rodgers is either retiring or going somewhere else. He is not coming back next year. For all you Jet fans to think that this team has a chance for the next two years to be Super Bowl champions, guess, you know, better luck next time because guess, guess, uh, guess something else. You'll, you'll be after Sam Donald next year. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You'll be bringing Sammy back. Sammy baby. Because, or Tyrod Taylor will be your starter next year. Travis is not ready yet. I just think 
it, there's a lot to be blamed on this team. Sauce Garner, where was he in the third quarter? How do you let Sutton all the way open in that play, in, in the end zone? How is he wide open in the end zone? That defense where everybody's bragging, this is the best defense in football, and they, they believe it too. They actually believe this is the best defense in football when it's not. It's not. It might be the best defense in the first half. It's just, I. it's embarrassing. And Garrett Wilson, stop me. Stop it. Stop going on the sidelines and dancing around and prancing around, talking to Aaron. We all know you're not getting along with Aaron Rodgers. We all know there's, obviously, there's something going on in that locker room that's not working. And stop with this Brees Hall thing. Stop it. He is horrible. And I I love, I, going into the season, I know everybody thought, you know, I, I, I did like Brees. I thought Brees was going to be a top, top five running back. I take it back. He's not the same running back. And everybody says last year, oh, he had a great year. And, and when he did get his feet under him, he did play well. That's because teams didn't realize they were going to run their offense 100% through him. This year, they're trying to do that, and teams just know it. He couldn't do anything. That Broncos defense was better than the Jets defense yesterday. <laughs> they absolutely shut down a defense, an offense that everybody thought was going to be explosive after what they did against the New England Patriots. They are not explosive. This is not an explosive offense. And then finally, they use Mike Williams. Finally, they use Conklin and all these other other weapons. And now, after we after week two and week one, they didn't use them at all. And you think, hey, after the Patriot game, oh, we're gonna win. We're gonna we're gonna be the best team in the AFC. They're not. I'd be very surprised right now. I'm just speaking the truth. I'll be very surprised if the Jets make the playoffs this year. I, after what I saw against the Broncos and being embarrassed on their own field, I the only thing that spells is it spells L O S S, and that's not lose, that's loss. L O S S. It means every time, every play, everything they do, they 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 go upon with loss. It, it doesn't matter if it's an offensive play or defensive play; they find a way to screw it up. And again, this is something that is very simple game planning too. Like it's a raining, rainy condition game. Like you knew that coming in. All the scouting reports are going to, and the weather reports are going to show that kind of thing. You're mostly game planning on outside medium passes. Like it's not a great way to succeed. Like the fact that Brees Hall, I know he was inefficient. I know he struggled, but the fact that he was not either running the ball or catching more screen passes to adjust to that defense was nothing. Something. Go yards after the catch. Like, Garrett Wilson's very good at separating. Like, even somebody like Corley, that's his specialty. He wasn't getting open. No, I know that. But I'm saying, like, even the game plan, like, he was all medium outside passes, and they were forcing them to do things that they weren't uncomfortable with. They didn't even know what what to run. No. They weren't even running this, the, what they were supposed to be running. They were, I, I, they were just not on the same page. Nothing was on this. Every single thing that I saw with the New York Jets made me sick to my stomach. After the game, I, my friend Eric, he was sitting here. He actually picked up and he left. He actually left his Mets hat on the couch. He was so pissed off. He didn't even want to sit there anymore. We, we, as soon as that kick was missed, he, he got up and he says, I'll see you later. He walked right out. It was just that embarrassing. And for, I don't want to hear from the Jet fans. I don't want to hear any excuses. I, I've watched so many different Jets podcasts in the last 24 hours. I'm not going to mention any names. Finding a way to make excuses. Finding all the good things that you saw with the Jets. What good thing did you see with the New York Jets losing to the Denver Broncos at home 10-9? to What stood out to you that made it a good, a good thing to watch for the New York Jets? Don't tell me the defense because I don't want to hear it. I, I saw Matt Ryan in the half. I saw... You know, obviously the you know Bill Coward and, and, and Cow, all, all of them. Everybody was sitting there and they were trying to figure out ways uh, to say how impressive the Jets' defense was. And then in the second half, they, in the third quarter, they laid up a lousy goose egg because they let yes, Bo Nix put the ball in the end zone. Bo Nix had a touchdown in the game, and the great Aaron Rodgers had zero zilch. That tells me that's all that I need to say about the New York Jets. That tells me and fittings, it fits to me that the New York Jets are going to have one of those years where they're going to be completely and utterly embarrassing. And that's what I saw on Sunday. It was embarrassing. Embarrassing to lose against the Broncos. And now you're heading to London against an undefeated Sam Darnold 
and a Minnesota Viking team. And they're licking their lips. Why are they licking their lips? Because they smell and they know there's fear in that New York Jets defense. And our, is the defense of the New York Jets going to be able to stop Sam Darnold and Justin Jefferson? The answer, for what I've seen, not a chance in hell. Right, not before, a chance. Before we get our guest on, uh, we'll bring Fish in and uh, have his discussion on this. Yeah, guys, it was ugly in the rain. You kind of get worried as guys get older, they don't play as well in the elements. I didn't think Rodgers was terrible, but he certainly wasn't some kind of all-star in that game. So that's that's number one. Number two, Errol, you, I, we've been talking about it. Braylon Allen looks amazing, and they're going to Brees Hall on the goal line. Braylon Allen's a goal line back if you've ever seen one in your entire life. Why you keep going to Brees Hall? And then when they do go to Allen in that second in the beginning of the second quarter, they're third and goal. They go play action on the one, and there's nothing there, of course. And Rodgers throws it out of bounds because he's a smart quarterback. But then go for it on fourth and one. On the fourth and goal on the one, they get the ball back if they can stop Allen, who is a really good player down there. They get it on the one. You know how many yards Bo Nix had in the first half? You overestimated it. He I, took I he had 15 passes. 15. Hmm? Negative seven yards total. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Negative seven. So it really, you're telling me. It really doesn't matter to me how many yards. Yeah. Yeah. But you're holding him. Like, this is about sale, Salah. If you're holding, you literally Bambi. held him to negative I'm seven yards. I'm calling him Salah. It's Bambi. Ba even Bambi would have known what to do. No, I don't you think go for it works. there. <laughs> you go for it there. They oh. get it on the one. They can't do anything against your defense. That's unbelievable to me. That was the worst call of the game, in my opinion. There were a bunch of them. The Lazard penalty, by the way, you haven't mentioned that oh yet. Oh, God, please. That's I don't want to mention it because of coaching, too. It's all you coaching. Been, you would have been on the 10 yard line. If you would have been on a 10 yard line that would have put you in scoring position and maybe. Four down territory because you, you you want to put that ball in the end zone, which they couldn't do all game. They were on the one yard line. It was first and goal, and they gave it to Brees both times. It, it made no sense. You have a big back like Braylon Allen. This guy has been so fun to watch. He's running over people. You give it to Braylon Allen. He runs the ball in. Game over. The game would have been over. And it wouldn't. They wouldn't have got. They wouldn't have had two touchdowns in that game. They were lucky to get the first one. It was just it was just so embarrassing. As a Jet fan, and stop it, all you Jet fans out there, stop making excuses for this team. There is nothing. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Go to London. Go to London, Aaron, and screw this one up. Screw this one up. And don't tell me. And please, I, I know you like him, Fish. I like him, too. Aaron did not have a good game. He did not have a good game. He made a tremendous amount of mistakes. You, you, you have to get on the same page as your wide receivers. If you can't get your star wide receiver on the same page as you, there's a problem there. Garrett Wilson was not running the route, the right routes. He was all over the place. He's yelling at people on the field. Brees Hall sitting there. Did you see Aaron Rodgers' look when Brees Hall, you know, made a move at the, you know, during the, uh, during the, behind the line of scrimmage and he gets a penalty? And he walks off the field, his head's down, and you, Aaron Rodgers gave him that look, like, I'm going to cut your friggin' head off, okay? You could see it. Aaron, there's, he, he can't take control of this offense. And this offensive line that's played very well in the, last, in the first three weeks did not look good against, against this Broncos defense. I was very impressed that the one thing I was impressed in this game was the Broncos defense. They're a lot better than I thought they were. And, and Patrick Sertan, I would even go – go so far to say that he is the best corner in football for the way he played. It look, he he's incredible. He shut down Wilson, got that fumble off of him earlier in uh, early in the game. Wilson kind of got shocked that you know, he just wasn't playing his kind of game, got taken out. And when they get take him out, that offense doesn't look so good. Rodgers was 24 of 42. That is not Aaron Rodgers type of efficiency. I do like him, but apparently he's not immunized from the rain. And uh, he was not his usual accurate self. Maybe that's Sertan. Maybe that's the elements. Maybe combination of both. I, I know this. Speedy, you can you can uh, testify to this as a Giants fan. Thunder and lightning is a great type of backfield to have. Except you're supposed to use thunder in thunder situations and lightning in lightning situations. When the Giants had Jacobs and Bradshaw, that was quite a combination. 
And then we had Earth, Wind, and Fire there for that a little bit. Earth, back Wind, and Fire. Exactly. That's even better. Because yeah. you had three well, packs you know, that could do many different things. I, just, I don't think uh, Izzy from Pittsburgh is uh, fire necessarily yet. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. They are, they are incredible at what they do. But to make Brees Hall the goal line back is not right. It doesn't make sense to me. It's just embarrassing coaching. And to me, when you have false start penalties, when you have, you know, the the line step in the wrong way on key situations, the Lazard thing, that's an element of a coach not paying attention to details in practice, not working with his guys to make sure that things like that are cleaned up. That's that's just a reflection of the head coach. And that's what you're seeing right now. The reflection right now with the New York Jets is they honestly don't know what they're doing offensively. They're trying to figure it out, and they're trying to go on the fly. And and for anybody to believe that this offense has figured things out, they're sadly mistaken. And if you're a Jet fan and all over, and I'm not going to mention any names on ESPN or on WFEN trying to find ways to say, hey, you know what? It wasn't so bad. It was horrible. It was horrible. And there's no excuse to this team and what this team has shown me so far going into what? We're going into week five now. It, it's just you're going into London. It's going to be rainy, by the way. It's always raining in London, England. It's going to be wet. We saw what the Jets could do in the wet rain. What are they going to do against Sam Donald and his Minnesota Vikings offense that has been absolutely explosive so far this season. By the way, Sam Donald has 11 touchdowns. He le I think he leads the league in touchdowns right now in the NFL. And Sam Donald, for all you Jet fans sitting there saying, oh, get rid of him, get rid of him. I told you guys, and I listen, I like Zach Wilson. I did. I'm not going to hide it. But what Sam Donald's doing right now, he's earned himself a lot of money. And if, they, if he keeps it up and, and Minnesota gets into the playoffs and they make a run and maybe even go to the Super Bowl, could you imagine Sam Donald winning a Super Bowl? Oh, my God. I will be sick to my stomach. I'm rooting for him. I got a Sam Donald jersey. I love Sam. I, I love him. I loved him when they brought him from USC. It's a shame what the Jets did to him. I didn't like what Mike McCagnan was trying to build around him. And now, and then Joe Douglas really parting ways with him because he wasn't his guy. So, uh, but again, you can't change what has happened. But what you can say is uh, Aaron Rodgers is not been the player we thought he was going to be at a full season under uh, under the helm as this with as this leader of this offense i have been absolutely shocked that these guys are not on the same page going into week five and it scares me because things could implode and we've seen this implode for many many years i think it's going to implode and we're going to see this team that we we i yours truly thought they were going to be 11 12 win team I don't think they come even close to that. I, I just, it is that bad. And Robert Saleh, I thought he was bad. Bambi, I thought he was bad. He is arguably the worst coach I've ever seen the Jets ever had. And that says a lot because I've seen Grow. I've seen everyone, every one of these coaches, Gase, you name it, the double G's, triple G's, or even man genius. It is horrible what I have seen so far from the, the putrid, Bambi Sala. Rex Ryan says that the Eagles are a bunch of independent contractors and that nobody is playing as a team. Colin Cowherd also took shots at the Eagles saying he doesn't know what they do well and Nick Sirianni does well. Uh, several Eagle reporters took shots at Sirianni for only giving Saquon Barkley 10 carries in a game where they didn't even have A.J. Brown or Devontae Smith. Uh, <laughs> Jalen Hurts has had several co conversations with Seriani about his team's identity and, and offensive play calling issues, saying we have our moments. Uh, Darius Slay um, also took shots at the fans on Twitter, criticizing his, his play and posted his career stats in, in, in a tweet that that is now deleted. Brandon Graham called a player's, players only meeting after the loss and says that he saw accountability from the players in the locker room. The Eagles offense is seventh in yards, 14th in points, while their defense is 22nd in yards and 29th in points per game this season. There's a lot of problems going on with the Eagles a lot. And I, I don't know if it's all Nick Sirianni. 
We all know that Nick Sirianni has his own personality and his own thoughts to where this team is and where this team is going. A lot of Eagle fans, including yours, truly thought that this Eagles team was the best team in the NFC East. They are not. There is a lot of problems with this offensive line. Ever since Jason Kelsey has retired, I, I don't know if this offensive line even knows what to do at the line of scrimmage anymore. Uh, this defensive front seven where everybody thought was going to be a powerhouse with Carter and Davis, this is this is not the defense everybody thought they were going to be. Everybody was comparing this to the Georgia Bulldogs team that won a national championship. This Eagles defense has been a shell of itself over the last two seasons. I, I And obviously what we've seen uh, with the problems that they had in the offseason with Hassan Reddick and then bringing in Huff, it, it, it's, it's not worked out. Every single thing that they have done over the last, I would say, last couple of months has been an absolute bust. Now, the one thing that they have done right is bringing Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley has been a beast, but only giving him 10 carries when uh, <laughs> they didn't have A.J. Brown or Devontae Smith tells me that the coaching is an absolute abysmal. And, and here's another thing. Kellen Moore is running this offense. We all know what Kellen Moore does. We all know what Kellen Moore is all about. We've seen him over there with the Cowboys. We saw him last year with the Chargers. The Chargers went from one of the top 12 offenses in the league to one of the worst offenses. Yes, they didn't have Justin Herbert all season long, and they had problems offensively because they couldn't stay healthy. But nevertheless, they, they were not – as you know, as offensively sound last year as they were the year before. So, and, and look at what the the Chargers' offense is this year. Now, obviously, uh, J.K. Dobbins has changed the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Jim Harbaugh's changed the offensive side of the ball. Justin Herbert's fighting injuries and still playing on the field because he has, he actually believes he has something to play for. I, I just think that the problem right now is that this coaching staff has a loss for words after the game, Nick Sariani's, you know, obviously um, pointing fingers and, and Rex Ryan, I don't know why Rex Ryan's getting involved. Now we all know buddy Ryan was at one point, the coach of this team, Rex Ryan has nothing to do with the, the Philadelphia Eagles. Why is Rex Ryan speaking? Jalen hurts is the team leader of this team. And Jalen hurts ever since he got that contract, ever since he got that contract, he has not been the same quarterback. Now, Maybe it has something to do with obviously Jason Kelsey running, you know, being the center centerfold of this offensive line over the last couple of years, but they still have Johnson there. This still was a, a pretty good offensive line going into the season. Everybody thought they were a top three, top five offensive line. Right now, they're a bottom feeding offensive line. As a matter of fact, they think they're ranked 17th or 18th in all in, in all of football. That's a big problem. And this defense, who can't get a pass rush, they can't find a way to get to the quarterback. It reminds me of one team in the AFC, the New York Jets, who, as much as everybody wants to say that the Jets' all, the defense is so explosive, last this past week they couldn't get to the quarterback. Last week they did because they played the New England Patriots offensive line. Uh, but over the last couple of weeks, even against San Francisco and even the Titans, they had problems getting to the quarterback. So, um the Eagles right now are a team that is trying to find their identity. And without A.J. Brown, without Devontae Smith, they thought they can win this past week against a team. And, and again, I don't know what is going on in that locker room, but Darius Slade going on Twitter and criticizing certain things about, you know, a different fan speaking about him and then deleting it shows that he's trying to hide something and trying to, you know, trying to protect certain players or himself for all the bad play that he has, he has, he's been on the field and, and, and the team's been the secondary. We thought this secondary was going to be better than it was last year. You added how many, they you drafted a first round talent uh, in the first round, a cornerback that's explosive. And everybody thought it was going to be a game changer. And then you, in the second round, you drafted a guy that fell to the second round who everybody thought was a first round talent who has not even got a chance to play yet this year. I mean, there's a lot of problems in this locker room and you can see that the players are not on each other's sides. And the only person that's standing up right now and trying to keep the team together is Jalen hurts. That's a big problem. Nick Sirianni has lost this team. He lost the team last year. The fact that they squeaked into the playoffs was pretty remarkable because this team just didn't have it last year. And and I believe that Jason Kelsey realized that this team doesn't have it. They're not going to be a, a Super Bowl champion. They're not going to have a chance to win a Super Bowl. And he said, you know what? Why even stay here? 
I'm going to retire. I'm going to make $100 million off my podcast and move on with my career. And so I, I just, I, and I don't care what Colin Her Cowherd says about Nick Sirianni. I don't care what other analysts are saying about Nick Sirianni and this team. What I do know is Nick Sirianni is a shell of what he was when he came to this team in his first year and his second year. This team has been a shell of themselves as far as the offensive line is concerned and a shell of themselves uh, with this young defense that everybody thought was going to be so explosive and so talented moving forward for the next five to six years have really not been the team that everybody thought they were going to be defensively and offensively. So it, it's been an absolute embarrassment. And Brandon Graham, who decided to come back for one more year, and Fletcher Cox coming back for another year, they should have retired. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we talk about it all the time, like D GMs and coaches being attached to the hip, but this is not the case. Howie Roseman's done a great job of building great value of these drafts. No, he hasn't, because these players haven't really developed. But again, a lot of that has to do with coaching. And again, does it? Does it? Yeah. I not not necessarily. Not necessarily because sometimes you over you you look at these players and you overrate them. I mean, Davis, everybody thought this guy was going to be a bulldozer. Do you really need coaching to get you get to get a player of that that magnitude, that talent to to a quarterback? I mean, the guy ran what, a 48 at the combine? This guy is what, 330 pounds, 340 pounds, runs a 48. I don't think you need to teach this guy how to get to a quarterback. You just go out there and do what you do best, and that's beat up an offensive line. He has not done that. And Carter, who they thought he had got him a steal, everybody thought he was like a top three pick. He fell to them, what, at eight or nine? What has he been? Besides dancing on the sidelines, beating a team 13 to 10 the week before and, and, and talking and yapping his big mouth, They've been an absolute embarrassment. This Eagle team that by far has the most talent in the NFC East. And, and by the way, J.D. Daniels, as good as what J.D. Daniels has looked, this Washington commander team doesn't have a lot of talent. This is not an overall talented team. The Eagles are talented. They're loaded in so many different ways, and they can't find a way to find a pass rush. They can't find a way to find a secondary that you're drafting guys in the first, second, third round that you think are going to be Big time superstars that have not developed, and you have captains and and guys, the face of your organization, like Gary Slay, going out on social media and throwing fans under the bus. And that's where they lack leadership because they need that kind of thing on the defensive side of the ball that they they've had only on that defensive line. And Darius Slay was supposed to be that guy that comes in in twenty twenty, he struggles there, then he does well for uh, the great in twenty two. Was okay last year, but they don't have that kind of guy. And Jalen Hurts is trying to be that, but he's also had his moments of frustration, and what we've seen as well. And Nick Sirianni is now the common denominator when you look at two different coordinators. Now, we talked about with Jack Sperry, like upgrading for Arthur Smith from Matt Canada. That's a big difference because of how bad Matt Canada is. It might be the same kind of thing with the Eagles, but at the same time, Khaled Moore has also held the Cowboys back in certain years too. So like, which end of it are you going to get with them? And just, it doesn't work when you look at something like Sirianni being maybe better for younger teams. A team they that was played a better team. They played a better team. They played against two good wide receivers. That's what they did. They played against Mike Evans, who was waiting to explode. He's had not Mike Evans, who was an all worldwide receiver last year with 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 uh, Baker Mayfield, and Baker Mayfield broke out last year as a star quarterback in the NFL after taking over for this team. And Tom Brady, he has been he was explosive last year. And then you thought after losing your offensive coordinator, this wouldn't be the same offense without uh, obviously what they lost in the offseason. And then yeah, Mike Evans. He, Mike Evans took a little while to explode this year. He exploded yesterday. Godwin is, is explosive. They have, we all knew what this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team was going to do, this Eagles team, if they didn't show up. I thought the Eagles were better than they were. I didn't know that Devontae Smith, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown was not playing in this game uh, this coming week. And, and they became one-dimensional. And once you become one-dimensional, you fall behind by what, what was it at 1.17 nothing or 24 nothing? When you fall behind, you can't run the ball anymore with Saquon Barkley. You become one dimensional. You don't have your star wide receivers. What are you going to do? And and then you play a great defense like the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers didn't show up last week against the Broncos. And we saw what the Broncos could do when you don't show up, aka the New York Jets. You see this week, uh, Baker Mayfield showed up. He show, he's showing you why the team is following him. And this team is, is to me, one of the teams to be right now in the NFC, they're three and one. And they're as much as I throw Todd Bowles under the, under the rug over and over and over again, Todd Bowles has figured out how to be a coach in this league. I don't know how he did, but maybe it was Baker Mayfield. Maybe it was 
Tom Brady in his final year telling him that he sucked and he didn't know what he was doing. I have no idea. But I, I just believe Todd Bowles has figured out how to be a coach. And could they win a Super Bowl with this team? Absolutely. I think Baker Mayfield stands for something. I think the team is following his leadership. And I think that this team can be explosive on the defensive side of the ball as much as they are offensively. Uh, Jamie Lee in our comment section said Sirianni is going to get fired, y'all. Uh, probably not yet, but at the end of the season, who knows? Uh, let's bring Fish in. <laughs> no, they should keep him. He's wonderful. I love everything he's done to that franchise. Right, that's from a giant fan, ladies and gentlemen. He he's He's just got them going on the same page. Maybe they're completely different books that they're on the same page of. But hey, as a Giants fan, I love the Eagles having Sirianni as coach because it's clearly an implosion just happening right before our eyes. It's like a train wreck. He, he Last year was the whole thing with his bodyguard, which I've never heard of uh, on a sideline where he's trying to, you know, so that when he loses his mind, he has a guy that just kind of keeps him in check. I've never heard of this. Bambi Sala had it in San Francisco and he brought him oh. over here to the New York Jets. Yeah. Yeah, well, he wasn't Bob called Big Sala Dom. Lost. No, but I'm, I understand what you're saying, but we've seen coaches do that. And, and Robert Sala, Robert Sala, who was so explosive as a defensive coordinator over there in San Francisco, he would step on the field, yell at the referees. He lost that when he came to the New York Jets. Nick Sirianni, there's nothing more than a, than a bragging personality on the sidelines. Nick Sirianni, I am a, I'm an Eagles guy. I love the Eagles. Besides the New York Jets, I root on the Eagles. Nick Sirianni... I've lost all my respect for Sirianni after that Super Bowl. I, I lost all my respect because after the Super Bowl, after the interviews, and after he tried to make excuses after excuses on why they didn't pull out that win and pull off that win, to me, showed me that he didn't. He obviously is not a leader. He's not a leader of men. He's a leader of babies. And he, and we all know, he cried on, at the national anthem at the Super Bowl, so we know he likes to cry, and who knows, maybe he likes to stamp his feet in the locker room too, because nobody is listening to this guy. Nobody. I think everybody, I think he's lost the locker room. I have no idea why how uh, Howie Roseman decided to bring him back. I think he should have just said, you know what, this is a young team, let me bring in a, either a veteran coach like Bill Belichick, or let me bring in a young guy that understands how to coach young men. Nick Sirianni, I don't even think He's a good coach, period. I don't know if he'll ever get a coaching job after this. He he had that one-year one, one run. He hasn't been anywhere close to as good as he was that year. I think he's lost every bit of respect from not only his own team, but other coaches in the NFL. After all the things that he – all the crazy stuff that he's done on the sidelines, after they score, him flapping his wings in the end zone, running on the field with his players, nobody likes that. You stay on the sidelines, you act like a mensch, you act like a coach, and then at the end of the game, when you have or you win a Super Bowl, if you have something smart to say when you win the Super Bowl, you say it. He he just he doesn't understand what it's like or what it what what to understand when it comes to being the centerfold, the face of your organization. I, I think you know, Speedy, you tell me if you have a run to the Super Bowl, and even though they're not super successful right now. Your offensive and defensive coordinators become head coaches, and you're not any good without them. Isn't that something that should be obvious to everyone that he was so good because he had great, a great staff that year? That they, the, the staff was not replaced. It's very hard to find, at the same time, two guys that are worthy of being head coaches in this league to be your coordinators. So it's not, it's not surprising they're falling off. I think the bigger thing on why they're falling off, and look, the Eagles – are still a very good team. Saquon looks amazing with them, even if they're not blocking that well, because Lane Johnson's hurt, and there's no Kelsey. And Lane Johnson, you know, we, we, over, we overlook him a little bit because Kelsey has been so great for so long. He's not there. Well, the center's been okay without them. It's the tackle spot, and they're really struggling without Lane Johnson in pass pro, and he's one of the best run blockers we've seen the last decade. So it's it's really that, and then you don't have your top two receivers who are both uh, pro bowlers. Uh, A.J. Brown is an all-pro, and Devonta Smith was probably the best number two receiver in the league. He was a Heisman Trophy winner. So yeah, I think that's probably holding them back a lot. I don't think Hurts is playing all that well, but again, less time. Saquon was never known for his pass blocking, let's face it. 
and you don't have two really great receivers. You know who was catching passes in that game somehow, besides the greats of Evans and Godwin? Trey Palmer caught a touchdown. Sterling Sh- uh, Sterling Shepard almost caught a touchdown for the Bucks, and the and Hurts threw a touchdown to Paris Campbell. Those are two Giants from last from from I believe last year's Giants roster or two years yeah. ago Giants roster. Doesn't matter the crumminess. I think it was last year. The no, crumminess. I'm mean, not getting annoyed at Paris Campbell all year. Believe me, he was terrible, and that's who he was throwing to. So I, I, I'll give him a little bit of a slide on this game, considering his weapons were out. And maybe he's just not a good enough coach to, to coach without weapons. You look at Steichen, he loses Anthony Richardson in the first quarter, and he wins the game with Joe Flacco, 39-year-old Joe Flacco, who after the game said Richardson said he's he's cool, although and watch, then he's like, no, he's not. You watch Joe Flacco take that mom. team. Watch, watch Joe Flacco take that team all the way into the playoffs. He, he's going he will. To, yeah. I really thought they were a good team coming into the year. He did that with Cleveland, and I think the the commonality is two really good offensive coaches, the Cleveland coach, and uh, who's somehow surviving I with think, Sean Watson. I, there's the something coach. going. I think there's something going on with Richardson. I, I think him hurting himself was the best thing that ever happened to Indianapolis right now because I think uh, bringing in Joe Flacco, a veteran guy that knows how to lead young kids, and I we saw what he did with the Browns last year. He was he was the comeback player of the year. He was unbelievable. At some, you know, for what eight games, you know, stint, he was unbelievable. He was throwing touchdowns and he, that everybody started to believe he just, they fell apart in the playoffs. I think they just, they lost everything once they got into the playoffs and they had to play that Texan team. Uh, but by the way, CJ Shell, congratulations, CJ Stroud. He has not played well this year. And I said it was a sophomore slump. And usually a lot of quarterbacks have that, but he, he showed up in a game that they needed to win and he found a way and he pulled it off against a Jaguars team that I don't know. Peterson needs to be fired. Uh, we will get into that. We'll go through the games, but Peterson's lost the team. He's lost. I, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, I think he's lost himself. I, I don't know what's going on with Trevor Lawrence, but the organization as a whole, you give him $55 million, you make him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. If you're Owen, you're own four right now, you're going to week five and you just offensively, you just can't figure things out. And you drafted a wide receiver in the first round who looks explosive. He he's he has been unbelievable. I, I've been very, very impressed with him. But all in all, besides him, what has been impressive about the Jaguars? So I, I just think the Eagles have been non-impressive. I think the Jets have been non-impressive. All these teams that everybody thought was going to be so impressive this year because they have health and all that other stuff and the talent. Uh, they've been a shell of themselves. So it, it's been really, really, really crazy. It's still early, too. We're going into week five. Crazy that we're going into week five. I remember when we were going into week one. It goes so fast. The NFL season, you wait so long. You wait, what, six months for the NFL season. So much stuff. You watch the combine. You watch the draft. You watch OTAs. Then you watch preseason. And then you're getting ready for people and players drops, hard knocks. And then all of a sudden... The season starts and it goes from zero to 17 weeks in just a blink of an eye. It's really, really crazy. Fantasy, and by the way, in fantasy, I had the, you look at the Beavs League, I have lost every single player. Every single player. I, I have like eight guys out. Eight guys out. All my bench. Everybody is out. It is absolutely crazy what's going on right now with injuries. And that goes back to the NFL and my complaints about the turf. And the grass, the NFL needs to figure this out. There's a lot uh, to say about the turf. And there's a lot of knee injuries, Achilles injuries, and leg injuries. It's mainly leg, knee, ankle injuries. It's all from what? It's from the turf. That's what it is. And by the way, Tua Tagovailoa, him, you know, crashing onto the ground and that hit, him hitting his head hitting the ground, that caused the concussion. It wasn't the hit. It was his head hitting the ground that caused the concussion. So I just want to let everybody know that it's it, the NFL needs to figure this problem out. I stop with the money thing. They're a multi-billion dollar industry. Just make all this, the, the all the turf grass and get it over with. I don't want to hear, well, it's faster. It's this, it's that. It will save injuries. It will save players careers. It doesn't make any sense. Adam Scheffner uh, reports that Rasheed Rice tore his ACL during the Chiefs week four win versus the Chargers. He added that it will be likely an end uh, end of his end of his season, but the Chiefs will not put him on the season-ending injury uh, reserve, hoping 
he could return for the playoff. Scheffner uh, said that on the Pat McAfee show that he expects the Chiefs to ver be very active in the wide receiving search and, and the trade market in a few weeks. Fox Sports' Peter Schrager told Colin Cowherd that Cooper Cup is a name to watch in trade rumors once he comes back from an injury. I've said that already uh, plenty of times on the show. Fox Sports, Craig Carton says that Amari Cooper should be the first call the Chiefs make because of his contract issues with the Browns in the offseason. Rice had 24 catches for 288 yards and two catches this season before getting hurt. Two, uh, by the way, you put two catches, two touchdowns, Speedy. But uh, he's been unbelievable. He's been a good number one. Uh, he was on his way to have probably a 12, 1300 season. He's been the only guy that really offensively has been explosive uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, it, Travis Kelsey has not been the same player, even though he showed up this past week. He put on, he put up some good numbers. And by the way, Taylor Swift did not show up to the game because she thought that she was putting a hex on his game. So I, I, I don't know if that to be true, but uh, there were stories coming out that some people were saying that the Chiefs didn't want him there, uh, her there. There were some people saying that, you know, they they just, she decided she didn't want to be there because she didn't want to give Kelsey uh, any hex on on the way he was playing. So I, I don't know. I don't know the tr what the truth is, but the problem here is why would any team in the NFL right now, help the Kansas City Chiefs. Honestly, this team has won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And I understand that, obviously, the Browns could probably get a second-round draft pick, steal a second-round draft pick for the Kansas City Chiefs for Amari Cooper. Or, let's say, a, a, a guy like Cooper Cup becomes available. That If they can get Cooper Cup, forget it. They win another Super Bowl. That is That, that would be a horrible move for the LA Rams, for the LA Rams to give Cooper cup up. I don't care what you can get. And you could probably get a second and a fourth for Cooper cup. I would not do that. The Rams are practically handing them a trophy, handing them a trophy. Cooper cup is one of the best route runners in the NFL. If not the best route runner in all of football, you put him with Patrick Mahomes in that offense, forget it, forget it. Explosive. Isn't the word. It doesn't, I would, if I was a team right now and I was a GM, I wouldn't do anything to help the Chiefs win a Super Bowl. I would do nothing to help the Chiefs win a Super Bowl. Let them figure it out. Let them find somebody off the scrap heap that becomes a star. Because Patrick Mahomes, I'll say it again and I'll say it over and over and over again. He is a shell of himself from what he was in two years ago when he was an MVP. Last year, he was not good. I don't care what anybody says. He won a Super Bowl because of the defense. He did make some throws in certain aspects of that game in the Super Bowl, but he didn't win that Super Bowl. It was the defense. It was what the defense did in the second half, stopping the run and not and really Kyle Shanahan giving that game away because he, he stopped running the ball to Christian McCaffrey. Right now, the Chiefs have to depend on Xavier Worthy. That, that, that's the guy. Everybody, they drafted him as a first round draft pick. They said he was going to be explosive. He's another Tyreek Hill. They haven't used him. Now he has a chance to be a number one guy. He is the number one guy on the football field. Now we'll see. Now they they don't have they, they don't have Pacheco for the next couple of weeks. I think they're saying like seven more weeks. So no Pacheco. We'll see how good this Chiefs team is with all these losses. They did win against the Chargers. The Chargers have been playing well. Uh, but the Chargers have some – the Chargers are not a dominant offense. They they have a lot of deficiencies offensively. They don't have wide top-end wide receivers. So I'm not, I'm not shocked that they beat the Chargers. But, again, the NFL practically gave that game away too. In the fourth quarter, there were penalty calls on the Chargers that were a lot of if, iffy calls. And, again, going back to – Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes has not been the same quarterback he has been over the last five years. So, I, again, you need weapons, and you can't blame Patrick Mahomes. He's not the one that's drafting. He's not the one that's bringing players in from free agency. All he could do is step on the field and make the plays that he can make. I, I just – what bothers me is everybody, if you go on social media, you listen to all these analysts, you guys know, Peter Schrager, they all uh, – Boomer is sizing. This guy's the greatest things in size, sliced bread. Okay, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. You are winning games because the NFL is helping you win these games. Offensively, go look at his stat sheets. They're not good. 
They're not good. Okay, so for all you guys that think that this guy is Tom Brady-esque, Joe Montana-esque, or whatever, whatever you want to compare him to, you want to compare him to John Elway. I don't give a crap what you're comparing him to. And yes, he has three Super Bowls. And yes, you would consider him a Hall of Famer because he's won three Super Bowls. He, as a player, if you're a superstar player and you're the face of the NFL, you got to go out there. It doesn't matter who is on that team and who is injured. You got to go out there and make the plays. And if you're not doing that, there is no excuses. I'm not saying that Patrick Mahomes has made excuses. I haven't heard any, but. I, he doesn't have to make excuses because the NFL is helping him win these games, helping the Kansas City Chiefs win these games. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Their schedule is going to get harder. It's going to get harder. And when you don't have – you don't have now Rice and you don't – and by the way, watch that injury. It was because of – now I'm not blaming Patrick Mahomes. I don't, I don't consider him trying – I don't believe he was trying to, you know, step in the way and try to hurt his own player. But if Patrick Mahomes doesn't run – in the line of fire there, Rice isn't out for the season. Rice is, you know, he doesn't tear his ACL. I blame Patrick Mahomes for that. I understand he's trying to make the play in the open field. He's trying, you know, he's trying to be the the, the reason to, to stop and everything. He wants to make, he wants to make every single play. Patrick Mahomes should have never done that. He put his team in harm's way. He put himself, he put himself in harm's way. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. The Chiefs are going to go on a losing streak now. They're going to go on a losing streak. Who do they play next week? Speedy, you know? I mean, you should know this, Mr. I, I, I know every single statistic. Who are the Chiefs playing next week? Because I know their schedule gets harder in the middle of the year. They play the Saints. Saints. That's not going to be an easy game. Well, after that, after that game. And they have a bye week. Niners. Niners. Yeah, it, it's going to get harder. And the Niners are going to get healthier. Kit, yeah, and the Buccaneers. The Kittle's going to come back. Uh, Debo Samuel just came back. Christian McCaffrey might not be back all season. It doesn't sound very good for Christian McCaffrey. He just went to Germany. I don't know what happened, but him going to see other doctors in other countries tells me that nobody could figure out what's wrong with this guy, which tells me he is going to be out a significant amount. I, I don't know if you see Christian McCaffrey this year. I, I doubt you will. I doubt you see Christian McCaffrey. And if you do, you'll see him in the playoffs. You will not see him in the regular season. So, I, I, this is this Kansas City Chiefs team is going to go on a losing streak. I'm telling you, this is not the explosive Kansas City Chiefs team. And this defense is not as good as it was last year. I said it when we had Sperry on. I'm going to say it again. The secondary has been very weak, very weak in, in the first three weeks. And I McDuffie looks good, but the other second, the other secondary players that they have over there are not as good as Snead is. And you can see the difference. Teams are starting to beat them on the other side of the field, and, and that's the way to beat them. And, I'm, I, and I, I just don't know if this team is, has enough explosive players that if they fall behind 12, 14, nothing, that they're going to come back in a game where you're playing a good defense or you're playing a good offense. Yeah, I'm curious to see if other defenses are going to adjust to the fact of they're not taking as many overall deep shots in terms of a higher volume either this year. Now, Xavier Worthy's had some big plays. He had a big touchdown against the Chargers that put them on the board. But in general, they've been mostly a yards after the catch, shorter passer type of offense. So will defenses adjust to that and make Mahomes try to take chances down the field with these lesser receivers that aren't as good? And that's going to be a big key, especially with Travis Kelsey not playing the same way. He finally did well against the Chargers, but he always killed the Chargers in his career. I'm not going to take that for anything right now, uh, even though the Chargers defense has played well. So I'm curious to see if they adjust. You're right. The uh, Chiefs defense has been on and off. This year. Not the run very well, but their pass rush has not been the same as last year. And the secondary definitely has not been the same as last year. So will they be able to make adjustments? Spagnuolo generally does better in the second half, but it's going to be a long road, even at 4 now. I, I will also say this. If you're a Chiefs fan or – you're in a division right now. Th this is not a shoe-in division. I think the Chargers are going to be fighting them all season long. And if they do go on a losing streak, the Chargers are for real. Jim Harbaugh is a good coach. He knows how to coach the, you know, he knows how to coach in the NFL. He's had success in the NFL. I I could see the Chargers making the playoffs, even with the talent that they have around them. This offensive line's good. Alt's been sensational. Slater's been sensational. This offensive line's protected Justin, Justin Herbert. Really early this season, he's getting hurt because he's he doesn't he's holding the ball too long and he's trying to wait for these wide receivers to get open. And and again, it is only so much uh you know an offensive line could do. So uh, I just think that this team is a lot better than 
even their record shows. They're two and two. They could very much be four and zero oh right now. So um, I don't think this is going to be a shoe in division where the Chiefs are just going to run away with this division. They're right now four and zero. Oh, they are, and and the Chargers are two and two. But again, I could see the Chiefs going on a losing streak. I just don't know without Rice. Are they going to be as 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 explosive as they've been over the years? I, I they weren't even explosive when they had Rice. So I I think they have a lot of issues. Uh, and and again, I I love Andy Reid. I think he's a great coach. Everybody knows what I feel about him. I think he's the best coach right now in the NFL. The greatest offensive mind the NFL's ever seen. But uh, there's just so much, so much of, of play calling and and a coach to see what he has on the field. To 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 find a way to put the ball in the end zone, so I I think they've got a lot of issues, and I I don't think teams are just going to hand them Amari Cooper or hand them a Cooper Cup or hand them a Devonte Adams. Nobody's going to hand them anything, and and I just if I was an organization right now, and you guys know this, if I'm an organization, I am not handing them a superstar wide receiver and saying, here, go win yourself another Super Bowl, even if you give me a first-round draft pick. I hate the Chiefs. I don't want to see the Chiefs win again. I think a lot of owners don't want to see them win again. Well, I, I got someone to sell you then. Uh, he, he might not be considered a superstar wide rec receiver, but he did lead the Giants in receiving yards last year. His name, Darius Slayton. Slayton is available. He is on the cheap. Stop. Stop. He's being talked about in discussions with the Chiefs by a lot of Figure people. Figure that one out. Figure that one out. They get the human joystick from uh, the Giants. That I mean, they did win a Super Bowl with him, and he had a, I guess, a big part of winning the a Super Bowl. The first Super Bowl actually played well, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't think Darius Slayton is the guy that they want. And if they want to do that, good luck. I, I think Darius Slayton is an absolute joke. And on any other team, he'd be – he wouldn't even make a team. I, I don't. I, I, okay, I'm not going to throw him on there. I'm not going to say that. He is a fourth wide receiver on most teams' rosters. That's what he is. But right now on the Giants, what? He's second. He's number two. So it just tells you how bad the Giants' wide receiving core is. I'm just saying. You're, you're not wrong. I, I'm obviously being sarcastic here. I, I do think he does fit the mold of what Reed wants. He runs a four four. He's he's one of the faster receivers in the league. And they just like to be able to take the top off and they need to be able to do it on the other side of the field away from where they put worthy because Worthy's really not an outside receiver. So they need someone who can line up outside to be able to take the top off that way so they can have Kelsey do his thing. He played a lot better without Taylor Swift there, which oh, I didn't please. even know, which I think is hilarious. Well, but you didn't hear about they, it, but they, 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 I, I, I do believe that they, they're saying that she decided not to go because they didn't want to. She didn't want to put pressure on him after all the things. Did you see that all the players were tra wearing Travis Kelsey shirts? Did you see that? I don't know if anybody was watching it before the game. Everybody was wearing a Travis Kelsey shirt. They made these special shirts because of all the the different hatred thoughts of of him on social media and all the analysts saying that he's lost the step and he's not the same player. Every single player on that team showed up. Uh, and we're, we're practicing on the football field with a Travis Kelsey shirt just to, you know, to give him confidence again. That this, it, It's very Kansas City Chiefs-like to do something like it's a, it's a, It's ridiculous. I mean, come on. This guy's one of the greatest tight ends to ever play the game. Why the hell do they need to wear a shirt to give him confidence? If he, It's Travis F. and Kelsey. I mean, seriously. What the hell is going on here? I, it doesn't make sense. Go ahead. Go buy those shirts, ladies and gentlemen. Go buy it on Fanatic. Go ahead. Go to our website, www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Hit the Fanatic, uh, lie, you know, click, whatever, lock in or click and, and get yourself your Travis Kelsey shirt. It, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I don't understand it, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I no, just to finish off on this, uh, it's really a shame this injury happened. It was a friendly fire incident between Mahomes trying to do a little too much. Taking doing a really dangerous move. If he didn't hit Rice, he would have hurt one of the guys on, on uh, you know, the defense. And or it, it just wasn't a really smart move. Uh, Rice was playing incredible this year. He wasn't really the number one receiver last year. He kind of came on to that role late in the year. Uh, he was the established one. He was playing like it, and it's it's a real shame that this happened to him in his year. But let, let's just say he didn't really do some things that uh, karma would uh, be smiling about in the off season. And perhaps this is uh, unfortunately what happens sometimes in this game. And he, you know, 
uh, there's all sorts of puns and jokes about him going too fast that I've seen tastelessly made uh, on social media. It's it's just a shame when someone that talented gets hurt. Who knows what happened, you know, in the offseason? Maybe he's a young kid. These guys are 23. I was doing not smart things when I was 23. I'm sure you were too. And it's just it's just always real was shame. And always will. You know, I mean, I'm not driving. I'm not driving drunk or, you know, going to clubs and beating up photographers or whatever the hell he's doing on the side or even being Tyreek Hill going out there uh, you know, on, a, on a dock and beating up people because they looked at him wrong or they were mouthing off to him.